into order. If everybody could just rise and say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. If everybody could just take a review of your minutes in the packet. And if you have any changes, let me know. If not, if we can have a motion to accept them. Motion to accept. Okay, first, Nick, second. All right, uh, all in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Okay, we have not had any correspondence this month. Uh, we do have two presentations, so we're going to move right on into them so we can keep the <coughs> meeting moving. The first, we have Fred Malley here from the New York School Construction Authority. He's going to give us an update on two major projects we have going on in our high school, uh, Susan Wagner and the Curtis High School Editions. Fred? All right. Thank you. Just an overview of the New York City School Construction Authority, known as the SCA. Our mission is to design and construct safe, attractive, and environmentally sound public schools for children throughout the many communities in New York City. Uh, we are dedicated to building and modernizing schools in a responsible, cost-effective manner while achieving the highest standards of excellence in safety, quality, and integrity. With a little pride, we've been pointing to two of our uh, projects. One is harnessing the future in District 3, um, PS62, the Kathleen Grimm School of Leadership and Sustainability, and as the borough president, uh, made sure uh, in the title is at Sandy Ground, the historic ground of our forefathers of Staten Island. And it's, uh, as I said, heralding the future with uh, solar energy and net zero, the uh, first of such schools in uh, the state of New York. There's one in um, Rhode Island. Uh, so we can't claim nor uh, the first of the Northeast anymore. They beat us to it. But then across from that, uh, renovations on Curtis High School over a century old. So the SCA is very proud of re uh, re restoring the old and uh, heralding in the future. Here's a breakdown of the proposed March uh, budget, which is uh, under consideration and hopefully will be approved by the City Council in uh, the June budget, which I understand is, is nearing completion. Uh, for, the, for school, uh, for the capital budget, as opposed to the uh, Department of Ed expense budget, we're totaling over five years, the five-year plan, to be $14.9 billion. Um, the capital investments, that's, uh, we call them capital improvement projects, uh, it's repairs on uh, existing schools, that's $5.7 billion. Capacity, new seats and additions is $5.5 billion and mandated programs is 3.7 billion. Mandated programs are uh, such as the uh, T12 uh, uh, lighting fixtures are removed. They have uh, PCB ballast and we're replacing them with energy efficient lighting uh, in over 732 uh, schools. That work will be completed as mandated by, uh, by December of, of this year. Um, also, boiler conversions. We're changing the boilers, old boilers in school, so that they now burn uh, cleaner burning fuels. Okay, now we get to look at some of our new schools on Staten Island. Uh, this is what is funded in the five-year capital plan currently, and of course this changes each year. Um, we currently have 1,512 funded seats. We've uh, divided them to uh, 232 seats on the North Shore, um, 824 seats also for the North Shore, and then 456 seats uh, for a, a potential school on the West Shore. We're currently also uh, allocating $224 to the uh, old Verizon building at 1625 Forest <coughs> Avenue. And uh, although the district has alternate plans for the building, we uh, designed and built a early childhood center. Currently there's a, a universal pre-K in, in the first floor of that building. Okay, District 31, we've also identified uh, a need which is unfunded at this point of 
12,612 unfunded seats for Staten Island. The New Dorp subdistrict, which is much larger than the neighborhood, that's 476 uh, needed seats that are, that are not funded. And the North Shore has another 1,136 seat need, which is unfunded. And here are some of the, the work that we have completed in District 3. Um, the PS62 Kathleen Grimm School of Leadership and Sustainability at Sandy Brown. As you can see over the roof is, is uh, solar cells. Also the parking lot area is covered with solar cells. We have uh, uh, geotechnical devices. It's heavily insulated and it, it produces as much energy in a year as it utilizes. Saves a, an immense amount of money on our electric bills. And here's the front of the building. Here's another side of the uh, solar cell around the building. And here we have our borough president and our superintendent, the school principal, the school chancellor, Kathleen Grimm, former deputy chancellor Kathleen Grimm, the late uh, deputy chancellor Kathleen Grimm's brother, our former assemblyman and current councilman Borelli, and the former councilman uh, Vincent Ignizio cutting the ribbon on the new building. And here's um, in, in District 2, the, uh, the new school edition, as mentioned before, a Susan Wagner edition. This will be a performing arts center. And as we'll see in a few minutes, it also has, uh, th these are the shots that I took uh, about a month and a half ago. So it's progressed along the way now. And this will be ready for September. And here's about a month and a half back uh, what the black box theater looks like. And I think once it's completed and you, you all take a look at it, you'll be impressed with the final results for the Performing Arts Center. Now here's the building that, which we designed and built as early childhood uh, at 1625 Forest Avenue, the old Verizon building. And that's currently under construction for the second and third floor. Here's a shot of some of the classrooms that are underway. And that, that will be completed, that school will be completed for September also, here we have Curtis High School edition, which is, this is the rendering of what it will look like. And here's a shot of the excavation taking place. Currently, this week, we hope to complete the steel work. Uh, we'll have a topping off, should be about Friday, and steel is up. Now we turn to some universal pre-kindergarten centers that we built on Staten Island. And the breakdown is over 342 uh, pre-kindergarten seats. We have 90 seats in the 1625 Forest Avenue uh, first floor, which is, they're occupied that now. And at one teleport drive, we have 144 seats that is occupied, and then 108 seats at 120 Stuyvesant Place. And we'll give a couple of pictures of these. Here's, here's the uh, Forest Avenue uh, pre-K. Teleport Center, and then we have the Stuyvesant Place Center. Now we'll move on to capital investments. Okay, here's a breakdown of for uh, the capital investments we have. We have we're looking at 116 uh, projects throughout Staten Island for 159 million dollars, and as you can see from the top. This is from fiscal year 15 to 18, because we've only identified the projects. We do it year by year, so we still have a year to go to add to this total. And as you can see, cer certain mandated, as I mentioned before, the lighting fixtures, 23 of those. That's a, that's a heavy uh, project. We do a lot of those. The boiler conversions. We have also uh, the, uh, as you can see, the well, it's broken down here. Uh, you know the various heating plant upgrades for uh, boiler conversions for a more efficient uh, burning energy source. Am I asking a question? Can I ask you a question? Yes. I saw you had toilets for students. Yes. Is this involved with the transgender issue or that's just? No. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's involved with the old fixtures and um, the toilets are heavily utilized and so what we did is we earmarked a, a certain segment of money 
um, for toilets. So basically what we're saying to the schools, we're able to address that as, you know, it's kind of, we, we put the money aside. So it's a little easier to get capital funding uh, in the current, current time period for, for those uh, projects. So basically what we do is we go in, uh, we assess the conditions of uh, existing school toilets, and uh, we replace the fixtures to make them more functional because uh, the wear and tear on the toilets is uh, uh, very high. I mean, I'm not speaking just from a personal basis, not so much in Staten Island, but I can see, in, I, I can think off the top of my head, some schools in Brooklyn, the, the students actually jump on the urinals, they're, 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 the wall. they're pulling them off the wall. Yes. So uh, it's, it, it, you know, so it takes a lot of energy to keep them in uh, decent shape. And here's an example uh, at Pottonville High School, District 3, um, of some of the money that we've spent on the new culinary uh, lab. Another example, District 2, IS24. This project, elevator upgrade, gym upgrade, and lighting. And here's a shot of the North Shore of Community Board 1 of uh, the exterior modernization uh, masonry work at uh, Concord High School. You know, it's, it's an example of how you take an old building and you treat it properly and it looks, it's, first of all, most important, it's watertight and uh, the windows will keep the heat in and it also looks nice from the exterior. Okay, Resolution A projects. These are projects that are school specific grants and uh, they're used to enhance uh, you know, specific uh, projects and they're, they're funded by the borough president's office and also the city council members. So we're very thankful for this funding source. And here's an example for uh, fiscal year uh, 2016. If you look at these numbers, $11 million for 79 projects. I have to say that Staten Island Council members, uh, we, we tip our hats to them, Council Member Rose, um, uh, Steve, Steve Matteo, and Councilman Varelli are very generous uh, in funding the needs of schools. And as you can see, technology is probably the biggest source of, of funding, uh, or rather than where most, most of the funding goes. But it also gives you some of the highlights of these projects, auditorium upgrades, uh, electrical wiring, which is a very expensive project, and uh, room conversions, partitions to make uh, you know, the, the schools more workable, playground upgrades, fields, I mean, not to mention uh, the borough president's funding towards Susan Wagner High School Edition. So uh, the list goes on and on of the many uses of this funding, but it's, it's, it's very important because unfortunately the capital budget doesn't always get the, uh, the specialty projects, such as the technology. <coughs> and and the, the council members and the borough president come through for us on that and the schools on that respect. And here's uh, some pictures of some of the Resolution 8 projects. PS8, we have uh, room conversion. PS65, uh, uh, North Shore, multiple, multiple purpose uh, room now. This, of course, is, is a building, a uh, very old building, that has been upgraded, we upgraded it, but there was a need for additional uh, gym space. So here's an example where uh, Council Member Rose used funding to have an indoor space converted to use for athletic uh, purposes. And <coughs> outdoor athletic purposes, here we have Staten Island Tech. Councilman Mateo, the borough president, were instrumental in funding this. And uh, the ribbon cutting was just recently, uh, a few months ago, uh, cut on this new facility. And here's my contact information. If you have any questions, you could uh, email me at fnally, nycsca.org, or give me a buzz at 718-472-8207. And if there's any questions. I, I, have, have, I have one question. Yes. You, you showed that the North Shore, you're short 1,100 seats. How many schools is that? Absolutely, but the problem is, now this sounds like, uh, I'll just spit it out. With $14.9 billion, it sounds like an awful lot of money. 
but it's a big city with uh, 1,400 schools and I believe over 1,200 buildings. And uh, we, what we've done is identified the need, but we don't have the capital funding to, to fund all those seats. So what we do have is like 1,056 seats for the North Shore, but and you're right, there's over 1,100 unfunded seat need. So uh, we're, we're currently in the process of trying to find the sites for the funding that we have. My personal hope and the hope of a lot of, uh, a lot of people would be that with the new budget that comes up now in June, maybe some of the, the, that identified need can be funded. That's the hope. Yeah, Nick, usually they identify first and then they go for the funding. It's not usually a one process, a one step process. Okay. Are you working with the mayor of the Bay Street Corridor to get money for these seats to fulfill the need in that corridor? Yes, we're working with our colleagues at city planning uh, with regard to the Bay Street Corridor. No, they don't have the money. Are you working with the mayor of the Bay Street Corridor? Well, it, as you know, it's, it's, it's part of the mayor's uh, plan, so uh, we're, we're you know, looking forward to the funding on that, on that count. We have not yet received it, but it's also worked on. Yeah. Fred Curtis, are we still on schedule for Curtis? Yes. Okay. The, uh, as I said, we're going to finish the steel. I think Friday. It, it, the last piece is supposed to go into place Friday. Okay. And you know, to the point about the corridor, you know, just kind of clarifying too that SEA is currently studying what the possible need for their their part of the infrastructure with the school seats that the intended um, affordable housing that could be developed there would require. And that's still a number that's still something that they're working on and looking yeah, at. Yeah, I mean, that's something we'll, we'll work on, especially as uh, city planning, their plans get a little further down the line and develop. But just off the top, we were both, Chris and I were both at a city planning meeting, and uh, it's easily going to require the need for a whole new school. I mean, because they were talking in, in terms of 2,500 uh, residential units, so that, that would equal the need, you know, that would fill us an uh, entire new school. So. Right, so if we have 1056 funded, 1100 or so identified in the North Shore not funded, with looking towards additional seats that will be needed because of that, there's a mighty number of seats that we're going to be working towards getting funding for. Yeah, and finding the sites is always the difficult part. First getting the funding and then finding the sites to spend it at. Frank, now the new performing arts at uh, Center at Susan Wagner, is there any parking planned at all? I know uh, it's an issue for the neighborhood. Um, any parking plans in the project? Unfortunately, no, because the policy of the Department of Education, although they do, you know, there are- I know the story. Yeah, they, they plan for school seats, not, not parking spots. Right, but when you put a performing arts center on top of a school that's already a busy place with no parking and late to the neighborhood. Um, my only thought, is just my, my personal, you know, is that maybe the thought is that if uh, they have performances after school hours, the school, there'd be spots available in the existing parking lot. But to answer your question, no, they're not planning. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Fred. Okay. All right, Dan, you're up next. I know I took one for myself, but I didn't leave one for her. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, 25, we need a school for 2,500. ASAP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>
Okay, so now our next presentation is on the Noodle Business Improvement District. Dan, whenever you're ready. Today is uh, for a vote of support uh, from the borough board uh, for this project. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Councilman Steve Matteo and Borough President James Otto for their support, uh, their guidance throughout the process, um, as well as, as financial funding as well. They're a big part of getting this off the ground. Um, my office, the SIDC, has been managing the project uh, throughout. So we're here today uh, to present the steering committee I am presenting on behalf of the steering committee, which is a group of property owners, uh, business owners, community representatives, stakeholders in the New York community. Uh, and the steering committee believes that this is the only sustainable way to move the merchant group and the neighborhood in the right direction. Uh, the, the, they also believe that New York has the potential to be the premier neighborhood commercial district on the island, and that New York, the New York bid will be the vehicle uh, for that vision to become a reality. Um, the following slides in this presentation will tell how the steering committee came to this conclusion. And like I said, we're asking the borough board to formally lend your support uh, to this initiative. So how we got here, uh, as, as everyone here at this table knows, New York Lane serves as one of the few historic uh, Main Street corridors left on Staten Island. Uh, however, with the advent of a big box store development with the uh, Highland Boulevard with the Staten Island Mall, neighborhood business districts uh, have suffered across the island overall in New York. Uh, definitely is part of that. Uh, organization of the small business community is vital to competing with these types of developments. We, it's not only in Staten Island that we see this all throughout the metropolitan area, and the thing that the merchant group reminds themselves on is that a rising tide lifts all boats, and what you do for your neighbor, what you do for your neighborhood is ultimately going to affect your bottom line as well as your property value. Uh, so the mission of the merchant group when it was started, uh, founded by the SIDC Councilman Matteo, the New York Merchant Group is aimed at organizing the business community along New York Lane and New York Plaza to provide additional services in order to enhance the economic vitality of the corridor. Improvements have been achieved through area beautification, through marketing initiatives, uh, through public events. Uh, most recently, our, our restaurant crawl, which, which drew over 3,000 people to New York Lane, uh, merchant organization, Holly Lighting, and public advocacy. Uh, past funding sources have, like I said, been through the councilman, Borough President James Otto, Neighborhood Development Block Grant Initiative, uh, self-funding methods through events like the Restaurant Crawl, Columbus Day, uh, annual dues from the merchants, as well as some private sector donations, mainly from the Richmond County Savings Foundation. Uh, and a little timeline of how we got here. So the program conception was in 2014. The merchants group was active for a year. Uh, after the success of that year, they incorporated as a local development corporation, uh, and they have gone. To, they have voted to go through the bid process. Um, in your packet, you have the full presentation that was presented at the public hearing for the Business Improvement District. Uh, this is an abbreviated version. In the packet, you'll see all the accomplishments, the events, uh, the marketing, the activities um, that are in there. But just by the numbers, these are, these are some of the things that the Merchant Group has been doing with minimal, minimal funding. You know, about, the, about, a, fifth, about a fifth of the funding that they have if they were a Business Improvement District. Um, uh, SI Live articles, they were in Cranes, New York One, your features in the uh, Wall Street Journal. It's held over eight events, uh, 10,000 attendees overall so far. Most recently, the Restaurant Crawl and Street Festival shut down New York Lane. It was a fantastic day. We grew over 3,000. Uh, sanitation services, including sidewalk sweeping, tree maintenance, pole banners, advertisements, a TV commercial, a huge Facebook page. We reach over 15,000 online. Uh, you'll see our, our signage and our window posters, um, our shopping guide. Custom Welcome to New York signs, which are going to be um, installed throughout the district this month, as well as uh, permanent flower planter installations as well, something that once we're a bid, we're going to increase and increase every year to help beautify New York Lane. And like I said, it's now an incorporated local development corporation, but it has some challenges. Uh, the group thought about self-sustaining themselves through dues. I mean, this, this requires actual business owners and property owners to go door to door and to raise money themselves. Um, this has been something that has been done for Christmas lights every single year, looking at about 100, 150 
dollars and it's been a hassle and it's been taking away a lot of these people's time, they don't really have the time to do that. It's unlikely to generate enough for a comprehensive service package like a lot of other business improvement districts have and uh, funds will have to be raised by a volunteer committee. My office, nor can any real professional or community-based organization, commit full-time to this model due to the lack of funding. Uh, and the outside funding model, we have received funding uh, from Richmond County Savings Foundation. That grant has ended. Councilman Matteo and Councilman and Borough President Otto have also funded the group. Um, political funding in general, it, although we we're very grateful for it, has helped us a lot, is not necessarily guaranteed funding depending on what the needs of the city are. Uh, the merchant group understands that. And also there's little grant funding available for, for business oriented nonprofits. So the solution was the business improvement district is a successful program that has worked all throughout the city. We're <coughs> 72 total. Um, and, the, and the steering committee uh, was the group that brought it to the attention of Councilman Matteo and SIADC. So uh, on the future, this, this, uh, and on Staten Island, this is the wave of the future. Um, I, you know, my office has presented in the last two in the last three years uh, to the borough board for the West Shore bids and the South Shore bids, which were recently passed. This is something that in recent years, merchant groups and local commercial areas are taking notice of. They don't want to be left behind from the rest of the city uh, and New Jersey uh, as well. Um, SIDC, my office, has launched uh, two bids in the last three years and will guide it, be guided this bid to fruition. So this is the proposed New York Business Improvement District. Um, a bid is a, just as a refresher, a bid is a public-private partnership in which property and business owners elect to make a collective contribution to services in the district. All services are funded by a special assessment paid by the property owners within the district. It's an assessment that the property owners vote on. They're currently finishing up the balloting process right now. It's 100% in favor thus far, uh, but it is a democratic process. Um, in New York City, for over 30 years, some facts about bids. Uh, they've been valuable partners in neighborhood revitalization, economic development, and you've seen uh, examples of them transform commercial corridors like Times Square, Park Slope, downtown Manhattan, uh, closer to home, Fifth Avenue and Bay Ridge, 86th Street, uh, Forest Avenue was the first bid in New York City has been a tremendous success. Uh, and then since then, we've had about a 20-year lapse, and we're kind of picking, picking up steam again, and we look for new as part of that. So in New York City is home to the most comprehensive bid network in the country with 72, uh, and they invest over 120 million annually in programs and services for neighborhoods across the city. Some other facts are that on the committee of all of these bids, you'll have a city council member, you have a borough president, Office of Representatives, you have the Comptroller's Office, SBS, will all sit on the board. So whenever the steering committee gets together uh, and says, why don't we have clout, why don't we have a say in these matters, at a, at a business improvement district board of directors meeting, all those people <coughs> are at the table, and it's a big reason for why uh, neighborhoods form business improvement districts. Um, out of the 72 in New York City, every year the board could vote to dissolve, and that's never happened yet. This is a testament to how successful the program has been. And a thing that I bring up to the steering committee a lot is that bids are not only champions in New York City. Uh, if you go across to across the river to New Jersey, you look at Red Bank, New Brunswick, Freehold, Princeton, Belmar, Manitowan, Morristown, Montclair, a lot of places that Staten Island has escaped to for that small town experience. It didn't happen out of nowhere. These are all business improvement districts. And every single one of these towns, property owners have made a financial commitment to reinvesting in the beautification um, so after the first five years of implementation, uh, property owners within the bids receive an average of 15% raise in property value. I bring that up to the, the borough board for the reason that this can also affect, uh, the community board, this can also affect residential value, uh, property home values in the neighborhood as well. Um, a good thriving Main Street affects the neighborhood overall. Um, and just, I, I gave some scope on, on bid locations throughout on Staten Island, you'll see throughout the city, the green dots, uh, covering the other four boroughs. We currently have three, a bunch of groups that are currently actively expo exploring my office in particular. We recently launched the South Shore. We're now working on, uh, I'm the district manager for the Richmond Road Local Development Corporation. We also have the Richmond Valley Merchants Association um, and the Richmond Terrace Commercial uh, Development Corporation. So typical bid services that you'll see, uh, maintenance and beautification is gonna be a focus of New York's uh, street and sidewalk cleaning is one of the most pedestrian friendly neighborhoods in the city and in, in, on the island, and we want to keep it that way. So street and sidewalk cleaning is a big part of it. Graffiti removal, landscaping, flower and tree planting, which we've already started on now, we're going to have the funding to do even more. 
Uh, another big part of bids, particularly in Manhattan, is private security. I don't see in this type of smaller mom and pop environment that that will be a need in New York, but it's something that the steering committee bill would vote on. Uh, marketing, uh, including special events, public relations, promotional materials, and holiday lighting is going to be a big part of the New York one. We're going to you know, keep our street festival model like we had the restaurant crawl to do that quarterly. You'll see this Columbus Day, we'll have a full uh, street festival down New York Lane as well. Um, street light repairs, customized trash receptacles, business signage, uh, and then the big <coughs> part is uh, commercial vacancy reduction, business diversity improvements, direct advocacy. As an executive director, they have a full-time employee on New York Lane working on these issues. We're right in the middle of the process right now. Um, we finished all of the planning, forming the steering committee, uh, worked with SPS throughout the process, developed a database of property owners and tenants, and conducted a needs assessment survey, drafted a district plan, uh, which is being presented to you today in PowerPoint form, and the outreach process uh, sent out mailings, have held public me uh, meetings, and documented results of support gathering. We're currently in the legislative process, so we recently passed uh, community board, uh, borough board today, and, and then we dive into interagency. At the end of the day, the city council has to approve, and the mayor has to sign into law. Um, this is, I'll just breeze by this, but this is a case study of Bayside, Queens, a similar neighborhood to, to New York that uh, conducted a comprehensive parking study in their area. It resulted in the following products, in the uh, parking utilization and valet parking guide. They took these studies, long story short, they took th these studies, these professional planning documents that they could only do if they had the funding to hire a professional planning firm, took them to the MCA and DOT, and now they're currently working on a private-public partnership to build a parking garage in that neighborhood. Parking is a major concern on New York Lane. It's brought up at every single meeting. The, this is one of the creative models that we can follow as a business improvement district. We currently don't have the power or the, the funding uh, to, to, to conduct a study on this level or to hire an outside planning firm to do it. Uh, but the way Bayside Village did it, uh, I think is a good example uh, for us. A couple of proposed solutions that we could do in New York include diagonal parking. The New York Highline project is the idea of building over the train station in North Lane. Public parking garage, municipal meter policy changes. A lot of these things, these things are long-term plans and seem very ambitious. But, I mean, it has to start somewhere and, and a plan needs to all require comprehensive planning studies. Uh, and that's gonna be a big part of the New York bid. So the steering committee proposal is broken down into four parts. Uh, the boundaries, the services, the budget, and the assessment formula. The boundaries of this bid are what many people refer to as New York proper, uh, as opposed to New York Beach. So from New York, uh, from New York Lane on Richmond Road down to Highland Boulevard, you're looking at a 0.6 mile corridor all commercial and mixed use property. You're also looking at from Steel Avenue to Ross Avenue, uh, Steel Street to Ross Avenue on New York Plaza. It's about a 0.4 mile area. Uh, commercial with a greater amount of mixed use, you'll see some more apartment units in uh, New York Plaza. The services that the bid will provide, uh, marketing and events, holiday lighting, sanitation, beautification, administrative, and advocacy are gonna be the six core components of the New York bid, and I highlight advocacy because it's these are the issues that, that get brought up uh, at every merchant association meeting that the merchants do not have the clout to solve, and it includes planning, it includes parking improvements, it includes traffic vacancy reduction, encouraging real estate development, uh, and city agency liaison. They're going to have an executive director to deal with all of these agencies directly, uh, as well as grant writing. An executive director proves his worth by how much money he can bring into to the, uh, to the organization, uh, just like any other nonprofit. The budget is going to be in the lower end of business improvement district. Uh, just as an example, Forest Avenue is a $150,000 bid. The South Shore bid that was recently passed, which is uh, broken into three towns, is a $185,000. Uh, so comparatively, based on the type of businesses we have in New York, this is similar uh, in terms of um, the size of the district and what the average assessment is going to be. New York, we calculated it's going to be about $550 uh, for uh, the average property owner, and that's an annual fee. Um, staffing uh, for an executive director, um, sanitation services, events and marketing, holiday lighting are the highlights here. Keep in mind,
mind is the first year budget, so some of the insurance, uh, accounting, and startup costs are going to get moved into other areas of the budget. Uh, but this was the initial uh, budget as approved by the steering committee. Uh, the assessment formula is going to be done by per foot of property frontage. So if you have 20 feet of frontage, uh, we're, the assessment is going to be $16.50 a foot. Real simple. We figured everyone was going to understand that math. Um, this is typically used in, in smaller bids for mom and pop bids, where it's all about frontage on the main street. Um, so each property on a corner will be assessed an extra $50, $50 a year. You get sanitation services uh, in you on the corner. Residential properties in the area will be assessed a dollar as a nominal fee. Um, Nonprofits and government buildings are exempt. Uh, and only commercial and mixed use properties will be assessed. The district plan is, is essentially uh, what I'm presenting to you today. These four elements, there's the boundaries of services, the budget, and the district plan, and the um, assessment formula. Uh, are the key components of the district plan. Um, and just to, to recap um, and what it means for the borough, what it means for the borough board, um, bids are a unique partnership uh, between the business and residential community. It's a partnership. Um, smaller mom and pop bids in New York thrive when they, when, they, when they work with the community, and that's what we've been seeing as operating as a merchants group. Um, in particular, we'd like to note that the president of the, the local civic association is a board member of our steering committee, and once we become a bid, he'll also have a seat on the board. We're one of the very few bids in New York City that allow civic representation like that, but Joe has been, about, has been a valuable player in the process, and, and we want to keep the civic association tied to the group as much as we can. Um, and the New York bid wants to build off the success of, of being We want to establish ourselves as a civic and cultural hub uh, for the island at large. So at the end of the day, the vision is we have a small business hub for the new island economy. Uh, we have an island-wide west restaurant row. We already have 20 plus restaurants. We want that to increase. We want it to be uh, an entrepreneurial epicenter for the island. When someone has an interesting idea and wants to open up a shop, they always know they can go, go to New York Lane and there'll be space available. <coughs> a dense collection of boutiques and custom shops. This is a walking, this is a strolling district. We want to keep it as such, and part of that is having clean and beautiful streets. Um, a vibrant professional atmosphere during the day. We're full of accountants, lawyers, architects, engineers. We want professionals to come to New York Lane and work, because that keeps our streets populated during the day. And I mentioned before, we want to see New York as, as a civic center and a cultural center for the mid Um It's a place to go for business lunches, for afternoon strolls, for celebratory dinners, community meetings, cultural events, and more. New York Lane. Uh, means a lot to the Mid Island, and we want to make sure that that this vision is achieved. Um, the steering committee, uh, as in your presentations, all the contact information is on there. Like I said, collection of property, business owners, community stakeholders, and my contact information is on there as well as Councilman uh, Maddie's representative. Uh, uh, Angela Thornton is uh, is the rep on the steering committee, and Maria Esposito from Norm Howe Insurance is our president and has been a real leader uh, throughout the process. I'd like to thank her as well. Um, if I could take any questions, that wraps it up for me. I just have a comment, speaking yeah. for Community Board 2. Uh, we see no downside. Uh, we like the proposal a lot, and we're 100% behind it. Uh, we're excited. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. So just thinking out of the box here, New Dope High School, which is one of the largest high schools on Staten Island, if not in the city, is on New Dope Lane. Has there many collaboration with the Department of Education, the school, student involvement, staff involvement? As a, as a merchants group, yes, in terms of just uh, events, uh, getting involvement, the marching band, the culinary institute, the cheerleaders, the football program, we've been trying to do as much as we can. Once it's a business improvement district, I think that bond will be much tighter, being that there is actual funding behind this project uh, to a greater extent. Has the DOE been uh, supportive, or well, really not at that level with them? Not at that level yet. Um, they're technically outside of the boundaries. Like I said, they'll be a partner, but they won't be a, a voting member. Or no, no, I just think that they could serve a very vital purpose to rejuvenate. Abs absolutely. I mean, yeah. you have a thousand kids walking down the street to go to the subway. Right, right. Um, no, it's, I mean, they'll, they'll be a partner, but I think this is some of the conversation that we have once, once we get through this process and we actually have a board of directors and we can start looking uh, to engage more partners. Okay. So, 
this Why is I'm that? focusing on on sidewalk maintenance, which the DOT currently does not provide. So this is this is street. This is uh, sidewalk uh, or sidewalk sweeping. So this is this is you know garbage throughout uh, from from the bit from the property business property line to uh, three feet off the curb. Okay. Um, so, so this is sort of the gray area that no one manages that the individual property owners are supposed to manage themselves. Okay. Now. If you're, if, you're, if you're next to someone who doesn't do their, their civic responsibility or really do the smart business decision to clean up after themselves, you, um, you, uh, you're, you're, you feel the consequences of that action. So um, this is sort of a, there's no free riders in this system, but people want to make sure that we know that people in Newark Lane, uh, there's a lot of property owners that, that, that don't you know, do their job. So you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it helps everyone overall. Really, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a cultural issue in terms in terms of yes, it's, it's an economic and cultural issue in terms of you know the mall uh, industry took off in, in the 70s and 80s, and that left small business corridors behind. Period. Uh, and what you're seeing in the last 10, 20, 10 to 20 years is uh, not only an increase in the bid movement, but an increase in small business organizations uh, along Main Street corridors. Um, and, and it's like I said, it's not only Staten Island. It's Brooklyn is, is New Jersey in a lot of ways too. Are you looking, you know, New York is kind of like a, a wonderful, you know, quarter in terms of because there's been a highly, highly concentration of like fire and work, you know, trying to get the stuff that's not work. Mm -hmm. Any kind of just next to things to try to get things out? And then yes, and that's all about comprehensive planning. That's, uh, you know, recently, recently, uh, Bob Engler gave us a presentation uh, about, uh, actually, this is the, the New York Civic Association about connecting New York Beach and New York proper. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, and that's one of the major intersections is, is, is New York Lane and Island Boulevard. Um, it's something that at our capacity right now, we, we can't really do to hire a professional planning firm to conduct a study like that. But yes, absolutely part of the plan. Connect, connections are good for everyone. We want people to be able to not only drive to New York Lane, to bike to New York Lane, to walk to New York Lane, and New York Beach is our adjacent uh, neighborhood. So if it, we can make a safer experience, a safer, you know, and, and more attractive experience to get them to walk from New York Beach to, to New York proper. That's that's good for everyone. Yeah. I've seen the day sense you mentioned. Uh, it's very dry there. It's very strong organization. I just have a general question. Can a business opt out of a distribution? Of a bid distribution. Uh, once the bid is 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 written in law, there are no. They have the opportunity to, to vote right now through this, this democratic process. They have an opportunity to vote at a board meeting to dissolve the bid. Um, but once it's, been approved, once it's been approved, there's no free rider. That rule is it. Okay. Any other questions? All right. We're going to move forward then to the resolution. So uh, we're going to make a resolution to support the proposed New York Business Improvement District in the city of New York on the borough of Staten Island. Uh, do we have any, I think we had plenty of questions, yeah. so we don't need any more questions on the motion. Uh, can I entertain a motion to approve? Yeah. Okay, Dana, okay. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Okay. Uh, resolution passes unanimously. We have no old business. We have no new business. So if I can entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting is concluded. Thank